Let's talk about how to think on our feet or think on your feet to supersize and grow our business so we don't end up looking like a chicken with our head cut off. Sharon Hornell's from here. I, I, this chicken, I think it was my son's and the head got broken off this chicken. I have the head and I have the chicken and I can't tell you how many times it's come in handy because it reminds me to not be a chicken with my head cut off and that means we need the ability to think on our feet. Thinking on our feet means to be capable of adjusting to new situations, new developments, new things that pop up, and then be able to make quick decisions based on that new information in order to create what it is that we want in our business and in our life. So this is a relatively new idiom. It didn't come into play until about the 1900s. We think of people that speak in front of crowds or audiences have to be able to think on their feet. People that are doing um, things where they're going to be asked questions, think politicians giving speeches, right? People in the crowd might ask questions or People, usually salesmen or motivational speakers or development people or uh, conferences or now TED Talks, anybody that, and they're not really asked questions, right? So they're just presenting. But when we're in situations where people could ask us questions or could interrupt us or something, comedians, oh, that's a great one. Comedians are perfect examples of human beings that need to be able to think on their feet and have a quick or, or quick response. So how does this apply to building and growing and supersizing our business? Well, number one of the most important skills we have as leaders in any type of organization, whether it's our family or a multi-billion dollar business, is our ability to make decisions, quick decisions. Uh, the better we know what we're talking about, the better we know our topic, the better we know the people that we're here to serve, the better we know our business and our company, the one that we're trying to create to make the world a better place, the easier it is for us to think on our feet. Uh, I've had a lot of opportunities to think on my feet throughout my career, both in corporate America as well as uh, in businesses, different types of businesses, because the one thing we can count on in the world is that things are always changing, right? The way things were yesterday aren't the way they are today in any of our businesses. And as our businesses grow and as we're purposefully growing those businesses and, su and supersizing them, we are automatically taking on different situations, different challenges, bigger challenges, bigger problems. So it's critical that we have decision-making tools at our fingertips when we need them. So I guess my question for you today is, how well do you think on your feet? Scale of one to 10, 10 being awesome, you, you know, anything that happens, you got this versus one, uh, not so well. I have to be prepared and plan out everything and think about everything I'm going to do and say before I do it. Um, I think when we're first becoming leaders and when we're first learning how to speak and use our voice in uh, small or large audiences, we have to plan things out more and practice them. But as we get experience in anything, we get more confident. And the more confident we are, the easier it is to make quick decisions, think on our feet, and, and respond in ways that make sense to people and that make sense for our organization. So my other question is, do you exercise your decision-making muscle? I think just like anything else, decision-making is a skill we can learn and we can get better and better and better at it by practicing it. Wow, what a concept, practicing things until we master it. Will we ever be the ultimate decision-maker? I don't know, it's up to you. Do you wanna be the ultimate decision-maker? I just want to make good, sound decisions, and I, I believe that we do the best we can with what we've got right now, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't be improving our skills and abilities in certain areas, and I contend that decision-making is one of those. Uh, so what's your favorite decision-making tool? I have a whole toolbox of different ways to make different decisions depending on the situation, and I will pull them out when I need them, just like we would out of our regular toolbox. So I'd like to know, do you have a favorite decision-making tool, and how well do you think on your feet. Share in the comments below and I will of course be with you tomorrow with another idiom that coincides with our no nonsense November for this year's annual challenge. Have an awesome day. I'll see you tomorrow.